Shares of SL Green, New York City's largest office landlord, almost doubling over the past year. In its most recent earnings report, the company cited improved leasing activity fueled by demand from the tech sector and the financial industry. It's also completed now more than $2 billion of debt refinancing. Joining us for an exclusive interview is the CEO of SL Green Realty, Mark Holiday. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good so, morning. so where are we? All we do is wring our hands uh, typically about commercial real estate, about four-day work weeks in New York City, about... Uh, security issues, safety issues. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, I, I feel really good, and that's why I'm here today. I know you spent a lot of time I know. talking about. That's uh, why. I, that's home. why we wanted to have you. I want to say uh, <laughs> earnings call last uh, yesterday. Yep. First time in four years, not one question from the analysts on work from home. It's really something that I think is in the past. Uh, we monitor our portfolio. We've got 900 tenants, so we've got a pulse on everything that's going on in this market. Uh, people are back in a big way. New York and Miami leading the way back to office. I think that was, in my opinion, somewhat of a uh, failed experiment or an overblown uh, experiment, if you will. For some companies, it works as part of a three, three and a half, four day work period. But for most companies, everybody's back. The vibe in New everybody York is Everybody five great. days. No, not everybody five days, but it wasn't five days pre-pandemic either. Right. No chance. You know, people are on the move. People travel, people entertain, people relationship build, people take time off. That's not a new thing. You know, our occupancies are probably 70 to 80 percent of where they were pre-pandemic. But at that level, for us, the buildings are full. In some cases, the buildings are at or above pre-pandemic levels. Is that going to be the new norm? No, I think it's still, we're still, you're still, still evolving. I, I think, uh -huh. you know, th there's a new generation of workers coming every year out of the schools, you know, into the workforce. And they're hard workers. They don't know from that pandemic era. I, I, I have uh, young people in my office. They were in on Sunday last week. They're there in the evenings. It's not quite the way it was, uh, but, you know, we don't get asked the question about work from home policy. So you don't think there's always, there has been this expectation for even the last two years that even folks who have leases that are current, that are going to roll in two or three years, that all of a sudden they're all going to trade down. They're okay. going to say, you know what, actually, yeah. you know what, you can have that, you can have three floors back okay. because we just, we're just, we just don't need it. I, I don't want to talk up the book. You have to look at the data in my portfolio. I, I ended the year over 90% leased. That's four years into pandemic, and we're projecting to be 92% leased by the end of this right. year. That means we're leasing space to tenants who are making long-term commitments of often between 7, 10, 15 year commitments right. because they know the future uh, for their businesses is to have that central hub. But I'm talking about a very specific market. I want to be clear. I'm talking about greater East Midtown. You know, I'm not talking about the far west side or Penn Station or downtown. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about places that are commutable, where they have a building stock that's highly improved and amenitized. That's where tenants Greater want to Greater East Midtown is what neighborhood? Third to, uh, you know, right here, third to Broadway, 42nd to 59. That, that block of space is still internationally considered, you know, New York's equivalent of right. triple So you don't think in New York it's all moving west? You're not, no. a, you're not a believer that the, the Hudson Yards phenomenon yeah. Yeah. is supposed to move everybody With all due respect uh, to over my... To <laughs> over, no? With due respect to my friends at... Uh, you know, Brookfield and related and companies like that. Um, it's not what I think, it's what the data says. Okay, the vacancy rate in what I call the Park Avenue spine, where we dominate ownership, SO Green really has made its, right. its case everywhere from 23rd Street to 59th Street along Park Avenue and everything just east and west of it. That market is about 10% direct uh, availability. That is, that's almost pre-pandemic rents. Uh, pre-pandemic rates, and we are moving our rents up in those buildings. But that data is in our supplemental. Right. Okay. I want to talk about either developing new properties uh, or buying new properties yeah. in an environment where interest rates are, frankly, out of control. Right. And whether you think that, that the economics of developing a new property in this city right now or right. In, in some other city make any sense relative yeah. to the rental rates that you're going to be well, able to capture. Let me say, in terms of developing, I mean, it's hard to develop new property in New, new York, York it anyway. Al it always, always is, regardless of rate environment. You know, it took, took me 20 years to build one Vanderbilt. It's one of the most iconic office buildings, I think, 
in the country, perhaps the world, certainly most successful in terms of rental achievement, that's 20 years. So to plan for a building like that today, I got to be looking at a demand and rate environment that might be 5, 10, 15 years in the future. So uh, what we're doing today and where we see the opportunity today is on the credit side. People know us as owner, managers right. of real estate, but we're also one of the leading providers of subordinate capital in New York. And I've done uh, $17 billion of that business over the years, uh, this over 26 years. Uh, all of it right here in Manhattan. That's where I think the action is. That's the best part of this market where you get good risk adjusted returns, mid to high teens. And that's where we're raising capital around a billion dollar opportunistic debt fund that we're in the market right now raising. When you do look out four to five years, though, what are you forecasting as the interest rate environment? Is there an assumption that rates will be higher no. still? You know, I've been in this real estate business in New York for 33 years. And one thing I've learned is I don't predict interest rates. I follow <laughs> the curve. So we always model the, co uh, the forward curve plus 50, and that's kind of our, our guru. We stick to that because that's the best um, estimate, in our opinion, of what future rates may be. So when I'm looking at deals right now, I'm looking at 10-year rates, five-year forward, and they're not that high. I mean, I know relative to where they were, a 4.5% 10-year Treasury may seem right. uh, like, you know, breathtaking. But I've done business in 5 6 and 8% Treasury markets. And it's okay. And in fact, I think there's more opportunity for people like us, and you heard from John Gray yesterday, people like Blackstone, uh, in this market, which differentiates between, you know, the, the, the people who have reputation, track record experience, and a low rate environment where everybody's a hero.